All right, uh, welcome back. You're still watching uh, Daybreak on Trust TV. Now uh, it's time for the newspaper review, and uh, we have our guest in the studio already here to analyze the front pages of some of the national dailies. Uh, talking about Nelson Yakubu Omonu, he's a publisher, Summit Post, and he joins us for a detailed review of today's front pages. Good morning, and thank, thank you so much for joining thank us. You, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Been with us this morning. Um, let's quickly begin with uh, tr um, today's edition of Daily Trust newspaper, where the major story says uh, more woos as aviation fuel diesel prices soar. Jet A1 hits 815 per liter, diesel nears 800. Inflation spikes as transport cost rises. Banks, others cut down services. How FG can intervene. Experts, this is a story on page four of today's Daily Trust. And um, on top of the page, Ekiti Governor Shibuhari hails Oibanji's victory. SDP kicks. Uh, story on page eight. Just beside that, uh, business story saying foreign airlines trapped funds hit $450 million. And uh, below the page, uh, there's a pictorial showing scavengers searching for iron scraps at a demolition site in Apo, uh, Abuja. And uh, below that, the story is saying pregnant woman, co-member, five others drawn in Bielsa boat crash. And uh, uh, that's the story on page seven. And then below that, on the belt, there are three other stories. E-Customs quote halts new $3.2 billion project. Story on page two, and uh, bandits attack Kaduna churches, kill three, abduct many. Uh, on page seven, and lastly, 14% uh, of Nigerians pilgrims airlifted ten days after commencement of a uh, uh, Hajj airlift. Story on page eight. Uh, so, Mr. Monu, let's begin with the main story. As this is more woos for Nigerians, and I think the riders somehow explain what are your thoughts about this hardship caused by increasing rise in the price of diesel as well as uh, aviation fuel. In, in fact, that is the that is the the sore point we've, we've got into, and um, Nigeria is, is not is not in isolation. It's a global phenomenon because of uh, what is happening in um, um, between, um, in Ukraine. The invasion of Ukraine. If you if you check, a good percentage of uh, global oil comes from um, comes from Russia, and then <clears throat> the energy. And for Nigeria, we where the brunt is coming from is we depend on um, on external oil. Though we we major producer of uh, of oil, but we don't we don't refine good percentage of what we're using. So we depend on importation, and that is where. We're having issues, and it's affecting a whole lot of things. Like businesses are, are crumbling. The those that are surviving will have to just devise any kind of means to stay afloat. It is it is a sad one, and I think that um, if there's anything government can do, and governments around the world are already improvising to see what they can do to still keep businesses like. Um, uh, Britain is already in recession. I, ju I just read that before I got into the studio. That um, it's already a Britain for the first time in 11 years they are in, in recession. And back here, if you, even down to household, what do you do with that when companies will have to buy like um, diesel for 800 naira to be able to power their system to be able to produce? Then the that's why products in the inflation. market has mm. it has yeah. just inflation is is, is sickening, mm. and for for ordinary Nigerians, I think um, we just pray that um, something is done quickly. Okay, you said uh, other countries are actually you know uh, doing something about it, and we have you know a writer here that says uh, how federal government can intervene. How do you think the federal government can actually intervene? Well, those um, it it will have to continue to be subsidy. There is nothing we can do in the immediate. While we are waiting for for companies for refineries like uh, Dangote and the rest of them, it is to continue to be subsidies so that production costs can 
But the government is seriously complaining about the subsidy. That is the point. Say it is neither here nor there. Now, if you are complaining about subsidy and you you are not refining this year, so you have we depend so a global whatever happened at the global level affects what happened. We are not in isolation. Mm. So we must continue to spend our money in this subsidy to ensure that prices of these products are kept at base so that whatever is put in the produced and keep in the market, ordinary, um, ordinary Nigerians can, can afford it. Because if you, the Nigerians are already traumatized by the level of inflation we have now, this is, this is frightening. We've not seen this in a very long time. Yeah, so uh, as you say, it's quite frightening. Um, but and just related to that is the issue of uh, trap funds by uh, foreign airlines. This is also uh, somehow related to this regarding our uh, forex crisis. Yes, also. that's right. Um, what do you think is the way out of this for, uh, you know forex crisis? Because it's affecting a whole lot of things. That's right. Um, what are your thoughts? No, if we if we just have to do with that, see. We, it's just it's like a situation we have found ourselves in the hole that we, we cannot handle in the immediate because there are a lot of things. We're spending so much to subsidize to subsidize uh, uh, well at the moment. We're, we're spending so much to subsidize. So is except the global, we, we expect that um, with the crisis in, um, in Ukraine, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, thinking has been done by global leaders to see what they can do to get Russia. If you, about, um, about four days ago, Emmanuel Macron, that is the president yeah, of, um, right of France, said Russia m must not be humiliated out of, uh, out of Ukraine. And I think um, German sanctions also hinted on that. I think what they are trying to do is to see how they can massage Russia, because why why I want to take this from the global level is that the moment that crisis is solved and more, more oil can be pushed into the international the market, market, then it will now start cushioning the effect of, I mean, uh, that, well, I mean back here because we are not operating in isolation. Like if you, there is a blockade. Um, Russia has blocked um, uh, Russia and um, Ukraine, which is a major supply of uh, wheat around the world mm -hmm. from from exporting, and now they have everything stockpiled there, and the price has skyrocketed. So we are not operating, in, we don't exist in isolation anymore. So whatever happened at global level affects us back, back here. So we, depending on when we are able to solve, they are able to, to solve the problem at that international level. That is when we're going to expect some so called back here. Okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's, uh, can you talk briefly about this uh, particular story uh, uh, on Ekiti governorship elections? You know, uh, here it says Buhari Hills, Oyebanji's victory, and yes. FDP is actually kicking against, you know, the victory. That's right. There will always be, you don't expect politicians to be on the same page. Don't forget, Shagu Oni, is a former governor. Mm. He has tested power before for like four years. Now, he knows how sweet it is and... The other man, the, the PDP man, has never been governor, so he don't know what it mm. tastes like. Mm. And depending on two people in the same place, cannot see things the same way, right? Now, the PDP says, yes, I give it to you. You had an upper hand. The SDP say, now, the missing link is, if you, if you calculate the votes of other parties, if they had come together in synergy, to stand against the ruling party in the state. That is one thing politicians don't, but, but because it, it is a matter of interest, nobody will want to give up his ambition for the other person. Mm. If not, if you put the votes of op opposition parties together, it, it, it would have been enough to, to upstake the 184 thereabouts of uh, that the, the APC is called. But rather, they spread the votes across across many candidates, and that gave um, the, PD, uh, the, APC. the APC upper hand. And uh, let me also commend INEC. That is a very good outing. I think in, um, in a long while, apart from, um, I think, Kondo and uh, Edo also, INEC up their games. And I think it's um, 
there's marginal creativity coming in here. We didn't hear of, uh, I think it's just one person that was killed, though it's regrettable though, but the, the, the figures are going down. It, um, incidences of violence is at, is at, is at, um, at very low rates in this election. And we we'll also talk about um, both buying. But then let me weigh in quickly on voter party. If you put the whole of the vote together, it's around 300,000. And registered voters in, um, in a kitty is, uh, is put about uh, over a million. Then that is um, it's worrisome. Also concerning. Yes, it calls for concern because if you have, where you have over a million people registered to vote, and you have them, um, and I'm sure that more people registered shortly before, before the election and even possibly collected their PVC. But where are these people? Why are they not interested in voting? Despite a lot depends on who becomes a leader. Now, well, why are our people not interested in going out to vote? So I think that is a lot of thinking. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting poses. Uh, there are very uh, pertinent questions that uh, we would love to explore. But uh, maybe we'll pause the conversation there. And uh, just before we leave the, the Daily Trust, uh, can you quickly say something about uh, this story coming uh, just maybe like two weeks after the uh, very devastating attack in Old Church? Uh, yesterday there was uh, almost similar, uh, you know, uh, at attacks by bandits on uh, churches in Kaduna where they killed three, at least three persons and abducted many others. That's another sad one. That's another sad one. And I think also about uh, four days ago, there was similar thing in the U.S., but the dimension is um, in the U.S. two people were killed in a uh, during church attack like that. And I think Nigeria is not in isolation. Nigeria is not, uh, it's not the only country involved in this, but back here, I think the, it's not, um, we can't deal with it differently from kidnapping and the rest of them. I think the whole security architecture should be reviewed because, and again, you, you read some, uh, a story from, from Katina about the man that was picked up, mm -hmm. and now that he coughed out 11 million, he's back home with his wife, reunited with his family because he has the money. What about those who don't have? Now, what about setting up tribunal? When an offense is not punished, mm. when because the people that are, that are being arrested now, we, we don't keep track of what happened to them after arrest, and that is a motivation for those who want to go into crime. We know times are hard, but there are people who will not take to crime because times are hard. So, what is the government doing as in mm. concrete action? See, because extraordinary times, I mean, requires extraordinary, extraordinary measures. measures. Mm -hmm. Now. What about setting up tribunal? Tribunal to deal with this. By the time people are being used as scapegoats, not even as scapegoats, by the time they are being met with justice, quick justice. Mm. And I think that some people will have a rethink. Mm -hmm. Going to people gathered to worship, you, you just okay. banging right. on them and start, and start shooting. And I think, uh, well, are we in in the state of nature. All right, let's move on to the next paper, and that's Leadership uh, Newspaper. And uh, we have uh, at the top of the page there, terrorists kill three worshippers, abduct 46 in Kaduna. We also have uh, Kwankwa Sir will not be obese running mate, says NNPP. Uh, healthcare patients bear brunt of outages, high diesel cost, says investigation. ISWAP kills six commuters in just two in fresh Burno attack. And we also have the lead story here saying Sans CSOs to INEC. You must reject candidates who didn't participate in primaries. And we have writers that say INEC can't promote impunity, illegality, say CSOs. Case of Lowang, Akbabio, clear violation of electoral act, say Sans. Machina insists on legal action over Yobe North APC senatorial tickets. Akpabio's name will not be on the ballot, says aid. No report suggests the name. Uh, the names were forwarded to us, says INEC. And then we have a story of uh, Ekiti Pol. After landslide, Oye Banji promises to work for Ekiti people. More stories coming in. Court halts action on e-customs concession project. TED Fund to release 15 billion naira for National Library Project. 
and then 18 die in Bida Minak road crash. All right, so uh, let's take a look at uh, the story that talks about uh, Kwankwaso will not be Obi's running mate, says NNPP. You know, uh, there are rumors that there would be a merger between the Labour Party and the NNPP, and now uh, they're saying that a lot of people are actually looking forward to, you know, that merger. But now the NNPP is saying, no, Kwankwaso won't be a running mate. Yes. I am wondering how that marriage is going to work. These are two presidential candidates that believe that they both can win. So who is going to be running, running mate to, the, to, uh, to, the, the to the other person? So it's just like, but in politics, we must, they must continue to talk. But I don't see prospects in that, in that measure. And the scenario that is already developing in the next year's uh, February 23 presidential election, we can use, it's going to be like, it may be like what has just happened in, in, um, in, Ekiti, State, in Ekiti State during the, the just concluded mm -hmm. governorship election. The opposition are spreading their votes. When Kwankwaso pulled out of PDP, oh, PDP. and so we are within such a short time for him to be able to to put himself together, and what he may what may happen then is that he will annex some votes. He may annex some votes. Then Obi to the, there is Obi Obi effect now that mm. um, young people are mm. discussing and all that queuing up to collect, but. What is going to do essentially is, in my in my opinion, is going to spread opposition votes across, then leaving. So that is what may likely happen. Mm -hmm. But for a major between Labour Party, um, and as personified by Ubi and uh, Kwankwaso, I don't see prospects. I don't see anything meaningful coming out of that place, except otherwise um, one of them decide to. But I don't see that coming. Mm, the headline, the major um, headline for leadership, speaks about the roporopo, so to say, <laughs> between uh, politicians try to snatch. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, that's what is happening, right? Mm. Uh, you know, politicians are actually um, fighting among themselves on who should be on the ticket, especially, I think, the one that. Uh, really grab attention of the nation is that of uh, Apavio yeah. and then uh, Machina and Lawal in Nyobi. Uh, what are your talks about uh, all these uh, rumbling? See, I, I, I next you, I, I read a post somewhere where someone said um, remove the, the eye in INEC <laughs> and was trying to, to fix some, something else there. Yeah. That speaks volume of, they should, be able, they should stay up. See, this man contested the uh, Machina contested for, he the participated in the primaries. Mm. He said he went through all the processes mm. and he won. So now politicians and their game, now they came that he should, he should give it up for, for the Senate president. And he, he, is it right to say yes or no? And the man said no. This is the ticket I want and I want to fly with it. Uh, but some people may be supporting, may be supporting Mashina that look, this guy has stayed around here for too long. Please, let's see what we can do. I think um, Lawal has been in the National Assembly since 1999. Mm. That is he the only person there? There, there is that thinking that some people, if you see a toad dancing, you just know that um, the, the drama. It is on something. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's like uh, Mashina is working in conjunction with some people, but then INEC should not be found to be, to be involved in any legality because, see, take it or leave it. How they handle that issue, especially that. Nigerians are waiting to see how they handle it. But if they decide to, to tow the, the part of uh, political parties, I think INEC will, will be compromising on their integrity and how people, like we talked about uh, party, I mean voter apathy just uh, some minutes ago. See, these things work, they don't work in isolation. Mm. If an umpire, the man who won the primary said, no, he, he, raised, he raised alarm so many times, about two, three times like that, that there's an attempt to substitute his name. 
and that um, um, APC, APC leadership is trying to write, um, they have even written, they have written to, to INEC to substitute his, his name. And he won, and he won fair and square. And I think um, plus or minus, that case may be settled in court. But I think that the uh, power that be may want to force, force Lawa on, on INEC. And but if INEC give in to this, I think uh, they have, they start to lose, to lose a lot, especially their credibility. Then for Aquavio and the rest of them, that is the whole game they, they play. But at least one has, has backfired. That, one, the, that of Lawal and Machina has come to public light. And I think INEC should, should redeem they should redeem well, themselves. Mr. Amonu, what do you think uh, will happen, for example, for Lawan to come back to the Senate? Because there are there are chances that he may not get the Senate presidency again. So why the point? What do you think is he is pushing to get back to the Senate? So that he will not be out of government completely. Look at it this way. Um, Ikeo when he was there as the deputy Senate president for eight years, and when his party was defeated, and he, he still came back to the Senate as floor member. So it depends. This um, being connected to, to power has a lot of uh, allure and nobody wants to. Before we move on, do you think uh, Lowen actually made a hasty decision vying for presidency? From um, some insiders said, the group, there's a group that wanted to use Lawa as in to, for some permutation. Mm. It's, it's politics. Even most of those that bought form that they want to contest and all that, you will be surprised that some people bankroll some people to pick up the form, to use them as um, for permutations. Mm. And that is not different from, from that of Lawa. You know, making arrangement that, okay, take this, I will come back after the presidential primaries and, and, and take it, all right? So it was, as a politician, that that is nothing is wrong with the decision to to con to vie for president. It has gone into his um, into record that uh, okay. he wants vie for for president. presidential seats. Okay. So it's not it's not different. It's not new in politics. Yeah. It's just that uh, he played into the hands of uh, possibly wow. a strong man. <laughs> That's interesting. So mm -hmm. let's move on uh, now to this day newspaper where um, at the top of the page, it says 14 banks rack in 47 trillion as deposits, disburse 25 trillion loans in 2021. Zenith Bank, Access, UBA, GT, First Bank, Eco Bank, maintain industry dominance. Uh, story on page five. Then uh, Princess Margaret Obebena for burial in Owa Kingdom Delta, August 19 to 20. Uh, below the masthead, uh, Buhari is still waiting for Tinibu's short shortlist of running meds. Story on page eight. Uh, Atiku mocks Tinibu. Obi says they can't take first and most important decision. Uh, the major headline: Buhari to Oebanji, you must be magnanimous in victory. Says success at poll indicative of people's confidence in APC. I won't disappoint AKT people. Governor elect assures. Your election is a popular choice. Kolaole helps Victor. Adamu Tinibu, Lawan, Faimi, Adebayo, Song Olu, others applaud party winner. Um, well, that's been it on uh, this day. So the stories are pretty much the same, but let's look at this uh, issue of selection of running men. As uh, they say, Atuku is mocking Tinibu and Peter Obi that they can't take the first and most important <laughs> decision. Now, what's your take? That's right. He's making political capital yeah. of um, if, you, if you have um, how many presidential candidates who cannot just reach out and say, that means from the time you, since you, 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 start, you make the decision to vie for that seat, of course you should, you should have some at the back of your mind that if I win, of course I'm going to get someone who is going to run with me. That is to say that they were not actually prepared. So you will not fault a former vice president for mocking them because he must, he is a contestant, mm -hmm. a very strong contender at that. So he must do everything to benefit from their inability to, at a goal, choose, uh, choose the running mates. And uh, is a, it's also not a good start for them, 
having to put uh, someone there with the intention that you come back later, you come back later to, to change it. And I think uh, I commend the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar for, for his ability to, his um, PDP has demonstrated that it is organized and uh, it has formidable candidates. It took, I think, 24 hours ahead of uh, INEC deadline. PDP was able to, and they are not expecting to change but except... You know, other parties will tell you that there are a lot of permutations and are uh, trying to consider some interest before arriving at a decision instead of, you know, taking a very hasty one. But then, the, that is why I say Vice President Atiku Abubakar also will have to make a political capital out of their inner, their weaknesses. They call it permutation because they, they will have to defend their actions. But he will have to to make some political gains out of their inability to choose. And we hope that uh, somebody will not say, I'm not, I'm not stepping down. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, time is actually not on our side. We'll move on to the Guardian newspaper. Uh, we have a story at the top of the page, equity elections. Oni vo vows to challenge outcome. Um, Oni vows to challenge outcome. Governor elects six truce. Federal government has 2,000 abandoned underused properties nationwide, <laughs> says WK. We also have uh, auto firms. That's the lead story. Auto firms' stocks crash as Nigerians spend 4 trillion naira on Tokumbo in 10 years. And we have writers that say stock investors count losses as uh, RT Briscoe SEO a hit 10 year low. Shakeholders blame worsening forex shortage, inflation, weak demands, others. Auto sector on the verge of collapse over rising imports, operators won. Federal government urged to supply industry with credit facilities tax relief. And there's a pictorial of a 105-year-old uh, Felicia Fayomi, uh, you know, uh, casting her vote. We also have more stories. Group insists Lowen, Akbabio, others didn't participate in APC primaries. Terrorists attack, you know, Kaduna Church, kill three worshippers, abduct others. Plat 2 records two cases of monkeypox, and then experts urges reversal of power sector privatization for enhanced supply. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, this story that talks about federal government having uh, 2,000 abandoned underused properties nationwide. Right. So why do we have to go that far, pro proliferating properties everywhere, if we don't intend to make good use, put them to use. Then, if that is so, why are we not selling off? And we need the we need to finance to finance our budget. And over two two thousand properties underused. Put them all for sale. Clean up the clean up the space. Use the money for something pro, for for something better. If if that figure is. Um, it's true, that means uh, it's regrettable and it's part of the whole waste that has brought this country to where we are. We, policies and projects are not well thought out. Somebody comes in and decides to, to initiate his own, abandon, abandon what you meet. So there is no continuity. That is why you see some of those things proliferated. Somebody will start a project, initiate a project just because of what he can get, not because of the value that can be derived from. And that is why you see everything littered. Then uh, saying that, please, I need to, to talk about um, the reversal of the, the past, the call for the reversal. I think um, leadership is about a uh, living legacy. There's something about if I die, let me die but let the right thing be done. The privatization we have in Nigeria is one of the worst decision, one of the worst one chance, in quotes, that we have ever, we have ever entered in this country. And if we, a lot depends on electricity for crying out loud. If we need, if we, if we love our country and that things must work, okay, the people in, in production, Okay, how do you, they have, that's why we are complaining of this. If not, if the, the public power sector is working very well, I think the, the over-reliance on diesel will, will be reduced. So yeah. if we can't get them to, to operate at optimal capacity, then let us, let us rethink again. Let us scrap the, 
the privatization, then do the right thing. Let's bring in competence. Let me use an example here. When we started with um, this uh, telecommunication, it was obvious that those who started at, that, at the time made, they were sincere, open bid, foreign company, I don't want to mention him, like came in and pioneered this thing and effectively it started working and opened up the system. Why don't we have a rethink about this power sector privatization? If we need, if we need to scrap what, what has been done, why not? If we need to compensate them, why not? If we need to bring to open bid again so that even if it's from the end of the earth, that experts has to come or companies that has the resources to finance because the, the privatization here, the interesting thing is that after the privatization, governments start continue to give handouts, continue to do all manner of things around companies who, who claim that they have the competence to manage this thing. Now it is time for us to have a rethink. And for President Buhari, I, my appeal is that, is a personal appeal that he should write his name in gold by being bold. Where he is now, he has nothing too much to lose. He should take that decision and take it, even if it's the last decision he's going to take before he leaves office, so that posterity will record him that he took the right decision by scrapping this God knows uh, privatization, well. so that the right thing will be done. People with cap companies with capital we come in, we don't have to spend too much. We, government will only create an enabling environment for them and they give us light. No matter what we are paying, as long as there's light, it will force down prices of, of commodities. They will no longer, even if there's going to be need for diesel, I think um, it will be reduced well, dra drastically. Uh, Mr. that's a very passionate uh, take. And of course, the issue of Nigeria's power uh, problem uh, intractable power problem is one that uh, evokes emotions because <laughs> it's one that affects everyone. Yes, uh, let's look at uh, our final paper this morning, uh, The Punch. Um, the major headline says APC-PDP clash over, over vote buying on its camp, most legal action. Uh, the story has riders, PDP came distant third, desperate to bring back Reunion's regime, says APC. Uh, APC popularized uh, Nigerians Electorate find it difficult to make rational decisions, PDP. Um, then uh, election for fraud with violence, we will challenge it at tribunals, SDP agent. Uh, then with the pictorials, there is a story just below it. Tinibur turns to Lagos, six, six massive LG votes, hoodlums attack convoys. Uh, jam registrar uh, chides politicians buying 100 million nomination forms, story on page 16. Kidnappers demand 150 million for ex NFF officers abducted after Abuja wedding. Um, story on page five and six. Um, well, so these are some of the stories on the front page of uh, of uh, the punch. But let me uh, seek your maybe final thoughts on this issue of uh, debt servicing. You know, we 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 spoke largely about the economy. The um, oil prices and all that, but then this debt servicing that the DMO is saying it hits 896 billion in three months. Um, where where do we go from here? I think there was a prediction recently by IMF at the World Bank that in in next year Nigeria may use almost 90 percent of its um, revenue from oil to service debt. That is already, that is already problem in the making. I think that um, we, have, we have borrowed too much and um, borrowing is not bad entirely in running of government because it helps to, to replace the economy, it helps to, but whatever, if you are borrowing, you must not borrow for consumption. But what are we borrowing for? Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> we're so sorry. We have mm. to wrap up here. Our time is not on our side. Thank you so much, Nelson Yakubo Monu, uh, publisher Summit Post, for joining us on Daybreak today. Thank you. For we'll take a quick breather and we'll be back at the top of the hour.